Hello. So in this video, we're going to begin our study of limits of functions. Um, and in order to do that, we need to first define these things called cluster points. So this video will be only on defining cluster points and then looking at a few examples. So what is a cluster point? Well, given a subset of R, so some subset of the real numbers, a point C is called a cluster point of A. If one of these two properties holds, so these are equivalents. Um, this definition is in terms of uh, intervals. This definition is in terms of neighborhoods. Now, personally, I like neighbor, the neighborhood definition more because it's similar to things that you would find in other courses, like a topology course or an advanced real analysis course, where you're looking at neighborhoods opposed to intervals on the real number line. So, but they are equivalent. So what did they say? The, the distance or the, <clears throat> the interval um, definition says that C is a cluster point of A if for any positive delta you pick, there is a element of A which is different than C, very important, it's different than C, so that the distance from X to C is, oh, this should be X. The distance from X to C is at most delta, right? So any positive delta you pick, there's some number in A, it's different than C, so that the distance from X to C is at most delta for any delta you pick. Right, so then in that case, C would be a cluster point of that subset of R, A. Um, so that's the interval version. Uh, the delta neighborhood version is, um, so for every delta neighborhood of C, there is a point of A different than C that's contained in that delta neighborhood. Okay. Now recall, I should maybe write this, if you forgot what this, this notation means, that um, a delta neighborhood of C is a set of all X such that the distance from X to C is at most delta. And you can replace that absolute value with any metric or any distance you want to define these neighborhoods. So in a sense, it's more general than this, but in the case for one dimensional R, uh, R1, then they line up perfectly. But I still like to think of it as neighborhoods, like little balls around C. So for example, maybe, um, uh, oh, um, Every point of the closed interval zero one is a cluster point of the open interval zero one. Okay, so let's see if we can kind of convince ourselves of this, maybe with a picture. So here's R, and then maybe zero, one. Okay, now um, let's call maybe that set right there, we'll call that A naught or something, because we're going to have some other examples coming up. So A0 is all the x in this interval, this open it. Okay, so this is A0. So when considering the closed interval 0, 1, if we pick any any point inside the closed interval, like maybe here, C or something, right? Then it's obvious if you look at the neighborhoods, the little uh, intervals around C, that no matter 
what size interval that you put around it, you're always going to get another element of this set different from C. So everything inside of there is going to be a cluster point of A0. It's because it's, it's dense. There's no holes in here. So no matter what distance you go about C, you're always going to intersect something from A0. But what about things that aren't in A0? Because this is a closed interval, we could consider maybe one or zero. Those aren't contained in that set A0. Well, if I look at one, for example, one is not in there, but no matter what neighborhood I put around it of, of given radius, or no matter what interval I put around it, I'm always going to intersect on the left-hand side of, of one, I'm always going to hit some element in A0. No matter how small I make the neighborhood around one, I'm always intersecting A0 somewhere. So yeah, that, that right there is going to be a cluster point of A0, even though it's not contained in that set. And the same thing here, right? If I pick zero, then no matter what neighborhood I, I put around it, no matter how small or how big, I'm always going to intersect A0 at a point different than zero. And no matter how small that interval is. So again, zero would also be a cluster point of the set A0. So that means that every point in that set is a cluster point of A0, even the points that don't belong there. Okay. So hopefully that, that makes sense. Um, so what's another example? Um, oh, um, maybe, oh, another example. Uh, let, uh, what is my, I want to do a, this one was kind of easy to see, maybe one that takes a little bit more effort. Um, what about let a one equal to the closed interval zero one intersect the rationals. So these are all the rationals on the interval zero one. Okay. Oh, and then the same thing is going to hold, right? So uh, then every point of zero one is a cluster point of A one. And this follows by the density theorem. Remember that we, we argued that there's infinitely many rational numbers between each rational number, between any two rational numbers, and the same thing holds for the real numbers. Between any rational numbers in zero, one, there's an infinite uncountable number of real numbers. So that's what the density theorem says. And the density theorem implies that the closed interval zero one is going to every point is going to be a cluster point for the, the set of rationals in here. Because if you pick any rational arbitrarily close to it, you're going to find a bunch of real numbers or a bunch of irrational numbers in that area. So you pick any point in there. By the density theorem, you're going to intersect something from zero one when you started from A1, something different than the point you picked in A1. Okay. Um, I should probably note that this is not a part of this example. Um, note that um, uh, finite sets. have no cluster points.
right? So if you're if you're a subset of the real numbers and you're finite, right? Then I can just kind of put you around like that. So that maybe like this is your set A two. Oh, I'll just circle there, 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 there. And you're some subset of, of R. Then there's no way that you could possibly be a cluster. There's no, there could be no cluster points for this set because, um, like, if, if that were a cluster point, then it would be arbitrarily close to that element, right? But it, it, it can't be. It, there's always going to be space between the elements for some finite set, right? So it, it just it won't happen, right? That's that's one thing that, that's kind of important about cluster points is that you're kind of you don't have to be in the set, but you have to be arbitrarily close to the set, right? So if you have a finite set A2, right, and you suppose that there's a cluster point, then there's always going to be something squeezed in between you and an element of that set. So there's no way that you could have been a cluster point to begin with. Okay. So it's, it's very similar to a, another notion called a point of accumulation um, that you might encounter in a, another real analysis textbook. Okay, so I encourage you now that you have the definition and we've seen some examples and note that um, maybe I'll leave you with a question before I finish the video. So maybe does the set of natural numbers have any cluster points? Okay, so maybe answer that question and then also come up with your own examples of subsets of the real numbers that do have cluster points and what are they and then subsets of the real numbers that do not have cluster points. Okay, um, whenever you encounter a new definition in real analysis, I think that it's very important that you, um, in order to understand it, you give an example of what it is and what it is not. And okay? So cluster points are there. This one has no cluster points. So expand on that. Try to make your own examples so that you get your hands dirty and you kind of get into what this is trying to say. So that'll be it for this recording. And then in the next recording, we'll prove uh, two or maybe one uh, basic theorem about cluster points. Thank you.